Hi again then guys and welcome to another speed build and this is probably one which you weren't necessarily expecting because of course I've already done a 400 mile per hour tune for the Tomahawk but the problem is that one doesn't actually work anymore. It did work up until Route X was added but something that they changed has affected the top speed of the car. And it's not just about putting the wings down and accessing the pneumatic boost because you couldn't do that anyway. It just is slower now. <laughs> so that same tune has dropped to I think something like 375 miles per hour I think and that was what I was still using. But I was driving it in a race and I thought to myself why am I still using this when it clearly isn't optimized anymore. So let's try and redo it, work from square one again, retune the car to see if I can actually make it that little bit quicker again. And I did. It's another three miles per hour quicker than that tune, which doesn't sound like much, but trust me, I haven't come across anyone who's doing more than 375 in a Tomahawk anyway. So 378 is a lot quicker when everybody else is doing 375. Now, I have no doubt there are random people who've got it to do more. That's pretty much always the case. People who spend hours and hours on one car. But trust me, under most circumstances, this is more than fast enough, especially if Slipstream is on weak and there's no boost, that kind of stuff, you're going to leave other Tomahawks behind. The only way they can keep up is with Slipstream. So leading the pack is not a problem when it comes to this tune. Now as far as the weight, leave it stock, which is already as low as it can go. Traction control, I would recommend having off, but you can actually set up your controller and I think your wheel as well so that you can turn traction control on or off while you're actually driving. And you can find that in the menu of the game, or in the options menu. So what I like to do is I tend to launch with traction control on one and then once the car gets up to about 70 or 80 miles per hour then turn the traction control off and it just makes you that little bit quicker off the line. But of course that's down to you. I'd recommend super soft tyres because of course you get maximum grip. As far as the suspension I'd recommend having the back as low as it can go, the front as high as it can go so nothing special there that's pretty much the same as before. The frequency as low as it can go as well, anti-roll as low as possible then likewise with the compression and rebound on the dampers you want all of it as low as it can go because it's still a very stiff setup car even with all of those settings low. It's not like it becomes a muscle car or something like that, floundering around all over the place. You want neutral toe. You cannot adjust the camber, unfortunately, because that would make it that little bit more efficient, but you can't do anything about that. The aero, of course, as well, you can't adjust, unfortunately. As far as the diff, I would recommend the lowest initial torque and the lowest braking with the highest acceleration sensitivity. And then finally for the transmission, completely new setup compared to before, fully customized transmission, auto setting of 435. Now, if I recall correctly, I don't think I've done a gearbox flip on this one. So you should be able to get these numbers straight off the bat. If you find that you can't, then come back up to this setting, the fully customized, fit the stock one, and then fit the race one again. And that resets the numbers. But that's just if you're having issues. Then I'd recommend, as you can see, 5.5, 3, 19.25, 13.74, which yeah, technically should be on 13.75, I'm not sure why that moved, 10.25, 7.75, 5.75, and I've opted for a final drive of 5.4. I've used this in races, it's very effective, and of course, once people start to use this tune as well, you will start to notice speeds going up in general. So. Use this early, use it quick, have the advantage, and then later on people will start to be roughly the same, especially other people using the same tune. That's always the way it works in the community, which is yet another reason why I never claim to have the fastest tunes. Because as soon as you put the fastest tune on the internet, it ain't the fastest anymore, because everyone can do it. So that's it for the tune. Now, of course, what you want to see is it doing that speed in action. Now, as I said, you're looking at a roughly three to four mile per hour advantage over most of the other Tomahawks that you'll see around. And as you can see from the Speedo and the Rev Gauge in particular, you're not even on the red line. So you've got slipstream potential as well. Now, to be honest, I haven't used this one in a race for a while, so I can't recall what it actually tops out at. But one of the good things about it is there are very few occasions where anyone's going to be in front of you anyway. So it's not really like you need that much slipstream potential. It's such a fast car, even compared to other Tomahawks, that there are very few occasions where you're actually going to be behind someone. So you don't even need that much draft potential. 
but you do have some as you can see if you need it you could get it up to probably about 400 maybe a little bit higher but that's more than enough for most races the handling is of course very precise it's very twitchy like the car always is so if you decide to use this tune i hope of course you have a ton of fun with it that little bit of speed makes all the difference and if you want to check out all of my other builds then of course click here on screen but for now as always thanks for watching